four years hiatus or four years of dramatic loss. I think they want it to be as grand as the Olympics or as special as the league here. So, without further ado, I am very pleased to have your company today as we mark the comeback of the well-loved beauty pageant in the country for Miss Team Philippines. Like mentioned, it's been four years since this pageant has been held and there have been a lot of title holders that have blossomed into five young ladies. And just like them, Miss Scene Philippines is relaunching under a new leadership. And today, we will give you an overview of the all-new Miss Scene Philippines and let you know what's in store for the coming months. But first, let me acknowledge the people behind the premier beauty pageant for Filipina teens. Some of our founders are here with us today. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Mr. Ferdi Yu. I call him Daddy Ferdi. I've known him half my life. When I was in Miss Teen Philippines, I remember I was hospitalized because I realized I had allergy to some food and he was the one who brought me there. That's how Miss Teen Philippines takes care of us. And also one of the founders is attorney Mark Ramos who is dear to me as Tito Mark. And I'm so glad that I've met them half my life and see how many things have blossomed. And today is another exciting day to witness that blossoming. But I guess to more formal, you think there's a reason why there's a stage. So let me go up this stage, this beautiful stage, and call on with me one of the beautiful board members of the Youth Empowerment Through Education Foundation, the social civic arm of Miss Team Philippines, no other than Miss Regine Angeles. Let's give her a round of applause. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, Steph. How are you? How are you? I'm great. Sit down. Okay. okay. I guess this will be like a talk show. Yes. That's the big a talk show. <laughs> so tell me more about how Lead Foundation has been closely working with Missy in Philippines and how this partnership has come to life. Yes. Um, as we all know, the advocacy of Missy in Philippines is global readiness through education. So our foundation is very fitting for this because um, we would like to empower education to the youth. And um, we have had initial talks with various government agencies, particularly with DSWD, um, DepEd, and the National Youth Commission. And so far, they are more than willing to extend assistance and make Miss Teen Philippines a partner in some of their initiatives. So, yeah, that's so great. Thank you very much for partnering <laughs> with you. Miss Team Philippines. Yes. But I guess right about now to let everybody know about what Miss Team Philippines and this partnership is all about, we will give you a short teaser so that we will know what to expect in the relaunch of Miss Team Philippines. Philippines. Surely it is 
a nationwide search. And let me just make one. So I remember in the last question and answer portion in Miss Teen Philippines, I said something like, I want libraries in national wide. <laughs> I had bloopers. So I just remember how much memories I have in Miss Teen Philippines. But at this point, of course, you would like to call on the reigning queens and talk about their memories. So may I please welcome on stage all those years of waiting to have their crowns reigned. Um, first is our Miss Teen Philippines first runner-up, Miss Chara Ocampo, together with Miss Teen Philippines finalist Bianca Wilson, and of course, our reigning Miss Teen Philippines, Raisha Nicole Villar Magadia. <laughs> Okay, let's start with Shara. How how have you been? Hello. And what have you been Hi, doing since <laughs> after your name? Hello, 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 Hello. Hello. Um, I'm great actually. Um, I'm on a low profile in terms of pageants. So um, I'm doing my masters now in the La Salle University. Um, and marketing communication. So very low profile in terms of the modeling and the pageant world. Um, but what I have, yeah, that's what um, I'm doing, what I've been doing right now. Yeah. How about you, Bianca? Bianca is actually from Cebu and she flew all the way to Cebu to join us. This I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. How are you? How have you been doing after um, I'm okay. Like, flying here to Manila, I got delayed by two hours. <laughs> But other than that, I'm here safe and sound, and I'm happy to be here. What have you been busy with during your own dream? Um, So right now, I graduated fashion design for two years, and hopefully I can start my own clothing line, and we'll see what will happen by then. Of course, our queen, yes. little did you know that actually in 2006, you competed for Miss Teen International held in Florida. Tell us about that experience. Um, that experience was amazing. So being Miss Teen Philippines um, enabled me to qualify for that pageant. Uh, it was crazy, like 40 candidates from all over the world, mostly from um, North America and Latin, um, South America. And I was the only one from Asia. So it was such an opportunity and um, like that experience was really um, brought to me because of this pageant and I wouldn't be there if I wasn't um, a candidate or if I wasn't an, um, a title holder. So yeah, it was very fun but still the local pageant was still more fun because um, I was with them, I got to meet them and right now we're still have, like friends and I really cherish the relationships that I've made with them. What have you been doing for the past four years? Maybe your what was your advocacy when you won the same Philippines, I guess? So for the past four years, like Kiara, I became kinda of low-key with pageants because of my studies. So currently I'm graduating um legal management at Mateneo de Manila, then probably law school next year. Um, when I joined Miss Teen Philippines, my pageant was really, um, of course, education and at the same time, woman empowerment. So I think that my personal advocacy is when I was in high school, uh, really aligned with the pageant and that um, alignment really made me want to join and be a part of this great um, advocacy that is Miss Teen Philippines. So um, there, and that's why the question and answer I was asked by, a tour, one, of, like, by, by one of the founders Attorney Jun Kawil, like what did my mom taught me? And I said it was really woman empowerment. So from there, um, I'm really grateful that the pageant chose me as their spokesperson and that enabled me to further my advocacy in empowering women around the Philippines. It really speaks for itself, global readiness through education. I guess a lot of the Miss Teens right here on stage share the same passion for education because I am graduating this Sunday with my MBA. You're taking your MBA year planning to go to law law school, and that's how great Miss Teen Philippines is. It changes your lives. It's changed mine more than half my whole life. And I guess just to mention to people, especially to the press school, where did all the Miss Teen Philippines go? You know the. In Miss Teen Philippines 2007, she's Maxine Monaster. She's married now with kids, but she's also a doctor. In 2005, we have Glenda Rumor, who's already a lawyer. We also have an ANC anchor, Vivian Villa. And in showbiz, of course, we have um, Beauty Gonzalez. And 
of course, in terms of pageantry. Oh, me then pala. I forgot. I want to show this. I, I totally forgot. When I miss Teen, I'm just like, I feel like a beauty queen. The shortest beauty queen you can ever have. <laughs> So in terms of pageantry, we had Nadia Shami and Nicole Smith for Bini Bining Filipinas International. We had Gwen Ruiz as Miss World. And we have, of course, Roy Testada for Miss Chinatown. So I guess for young girls who dream to become beauty queen or role models for the youth, Miss Teen Philippines is a great stepping stone because it's really empowering women through education. And I guess that's everybody's advocacy. It's not just for young girls, but maybe young guys as well, where they look up to the girl crushes that they have. Oh, this girl has substance and has something to say. How about for you, Miss Regine? Um, how do you think this whole Miss Team Philippines is different from the other pageants? Well, um, we all know that there are a lot of pageants here in the Philippines, but Miss Teen Philippines is the only pageant dedicated for the youth. So um, we are looking for a youth ambassador to be the forefront in promoting our cause and be a role model among her peers. Right, a role model, which is, I guess, very important. I wish there was a grooming school for role models, I think one of those grooming schools, which is not institutionalized yet, is Miss Teen Philippines. And since we're looking for a more than a pretty face, I guess people who could answer great under pressure, maybe we can kind of open the floor to the press and test, and test our question and answer for if we have any questions for anyone on stage about the pageant. Um, may you please uh, say your name and your question. Okay, we have a question from your Michael Glenn. Hello ladies, um, good afternoon. I'm John Bonner from Kumakal.com uh, and it's a website. Um, first of all, uh, congratulations for uh, doing this this year. Um, may I ask ma'am, um, what was the problem on why it hasn't been posted for the, like, the past few years? Um, would you mind telling us the reason why? I believe the right person to answer this question is Mr. Uh, the founder, Mr. Ferdiu. Okay. Okay. I'll stay on the side. I don't think I fit in with these beautiful faces on stage. <laughs> Actually, um, yes, uh, we wanted to continue Miss Teen Philippines. Uh, but as you would know, when we uh, last held it, it was back in uh, 07, 08. But, oh, no, but uh, we, we started 2004, and then we, started, we did it in 07, 08, which uh, kind of was hard for the Philippines in terms of uh, the crisis, Asian crisis, and uh, so we had to stop. And then, uh, fortunately, uh, somebody was interested in uh, running the 2014 show, so we, they asked us the permission, gave, we gave them the permission to continue it. Unfortunately, it, uh, what? Well, it was very successful. We have these beautiful ladies up here from 2014, but um, they kind of had the budget to say. Now, um, the founders have been actually had their own day jobs, no? And uh, we want we started Miss Teen Philippines because we wanted to empower the young ladies. Unfortunately, and we have to be honest, it is really quite hard. But now that the pageant industry is really very, very hot in the Philippines. We just decided to, hey, you know, maybe it's about time. And so with a group of youth, they were interested and said, hey, we can help you out with this. We have to do this again because we really believe that there were so many good products from this team for the beans and we're very proud of all of them. So. They were interested, we had an agreement, and here we are today. Um, I wish, of course, the organizers the best of luck. We will be here to guide them, obviously, because uh, of our experience. But with their passion, with their love also for 
the empowerment of the you know young women of uh, today, I'm sure they will uh, be doing a good job. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Um, my next question is for Richa. Um, all right. 2018. Um, you've been uh, the rating of uh, three. But uh, to, uh, this year, you're going to be part of a panel uh, which will be judging uh, these ladies. What were, would your advice be to, um, you know, the prospective uh, queen this 2019? So, um, being here actually, like we were um, really dreaming before um, to be able to teach and share our experiences because you were roommates. And so like when like after the coronation and we were so happy because she was first runner up and I was I was crowned and we were like, I can't believe this. So we really want like we we really waited for this day to come when it'll be our turn to actually give back and teach and actually share our experiences um, to our like, to aspiring um, aspiring babies. So I think my advice to them would be of course to keep persevering in whatever their dreams are. Um, I think joining pageant really requires courage and passion. Like when you put your um, self into it, you really have to be wholehearted. And I think that for the, for those who want to join this Philippines, um, it was really wanted for them to be able to to make the most of the experience. And another word of advice that I can give is, of course, for them to never give up. Um, because as mentioned by Stephanie Saul, this team Philippines is a milestone for everyone. Um, in a pageant, there will be just maybe five winners, but it's not like something that will stop you from being more than you are. Like Bianca, she won a lot of titles after Miss Team, and that's just really amazing. So um, I think that we will do our best as mentors to to give them um, the training that they need to make them grow more as a person and as a woman. So that would be my advice to them. Will you girls have sessions with the uh, upcoming candidates? Um, will there be like, uh, as you mentioned earlier, you will try to like have training sessions? Yes, um, hopefully. Actually, um, me and um, Rachel, well, Nicole, my roomie, um, after we won the pageant, we were in the happiest room that night. And we were like, oh, we can't wait to mentor the next group because we've been through so much also. Not just physically, but also mentally, because again, Miss Teen Philippines is not all about the brains. I'm sorry, it's not all, not just all about the beauty. It's how you answer a question, how you present yourself. So, um, yeah, I think we will for sure. I think for the girls, for the young girls to see um, the beauty queens of Miss Teen Philippines, of course, it will inspire us. Like actually, Miss Stephanie Saul went to um, our. Um, what do you call this? Um, our meetings before, Ms. Lara Kigaman. So um, it's really exciting that we'll actually be there for them also. And for sure, yeah, we'll be there to mentor them. So for the past pageant, we have like Rufa Gutierrez to teach us how to walk, Lara Kigaman also for personality development, and Bianca Valero. So it was like an amazing channel of, met like, yeah, of mentors. And I think that we can maybe speak and make some person yeah, personality development workshops because. Uh, we were once in their position, so we are in the best place to actually um, maybe make them more um, confident, maybe less shy, and we can just tell them, oh, we were once like you, we were there, and you can do it. You know, you'll get through the coronation night of the dual movement. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Enzo, one of the love to our crown beauties. Um, it's been four years since you won and uh, wore the black brown. So what do you remember the most in those four years after which many uh, moments and uh, what are your experience? What are the crown and what are you up to now? And uh, we're going to break push them to new generation. I think for me because Funny, uh, funnily, I was a first timer. I was 17 years old, and my dad um, actually heard it from the radio. So going into the pageant, I didn't know anything about makeup. I think all of us, anything about makeup, anything about um, being a beauty queen, which is very poised, very uh, 
genuine to people. I think you were all first timers, and the whole pageant was really um, part of our growth and development as a woman, uh, as women. So, um, for instance, me and Nicole, we usually have this public speaking things in our room. Um, also, the mentors again, uh, great panel: Jane Monis, Pestara Kegama, Rufa Gutierrez and so many more and we were just very privileged to be able to have time with them just to have time with them to hear what they have to say it's definitely highlights right so definitely highlights of our experience since we're just basically babies that time <laughs> so yeah basically the whole experience um from regionals to nationals um it was great and of course after we had a chance to do conferences um to speak to the youth so it's not all just about the pageant, right? After we were able to speak for um, the Department of Education, Brigada Escuela. Um, also, we got to speak to um, exchange students to Japan. It's Genesis 2.0 uh, in Tagaytay. So it's really fulfilling because, you know, entering the pageant, I was like, okay, I'm going to do like strutting, I'm going to model. But after that, you, just, you can just see people, when you're a beauty queen, People see you as a public figure, they hear you, they listen to you. And it, I think I realized that right after the pageant also, we were able to um, expose, I guess, our advocacies, um, especially education for the sea Philippines. So the whole thing, I can't even pick one, is um, very monumental to my life. So to add to that, like Kiara, I was only 15 at, like, at that time. And I was a third year high school student who was kind of nerdy, never wore makeup or walked in heels. But until Missy Philippines came into my life, they actually like made me into a woman. Like when I entered there, I was just really a student. And when I went out of the pageant, I was really, you know, molded and I was really um, transformed into an empowered woman. So just to add to the highlights, they say that the journey is the reward. So the journey of like entering the pageant until we finished the pageant and we did, we did the activities after was I guess the whole highlight of it. Like it's not enough to contain it, it's just one experience because as a whole, um, joining Missy Philippines is just something that is unquantifiable. It's just amazing, really amazing. Yeah, so as mentioned, um, aside from those um, um, conferences where we spoke for the youth, um, we also had this Brigada Escuela. I think that's very important because we actually acknowledged um, the accomplishments of many teachers around the Philippines. So these very people who actually um, give in education to the youth. And I think you, um, education is the very tool for empowerment. So um, I'm just really glad how the activities of the pageant during and after are really aligned to education. And when we were on the house, we, were, we also had courtesy calls with LGUs. And I think one of the notable experience was our book drive with CNN Hero of the Year. Yeah, um, Efren Penn in Florida. So um, he talked, he shared his experience to us, like what drives him to do these books, what makes him so selfless. And um, this, like the opportunity of meeting these kinds of people who are so passionate about what they do, I think that was really a great motivating factor for us. We're so young and then you know, we meet these kinds of people who are so inspiring. So yeah, definitely it's the journey, the whole journey of being with Philippines is what I think we can offer to share to the future of Paris for the pageant. Um, so for me, because I'm from Cebu, so I don't have any knowledge here in Manila. That was my first time coming to Manila, joining the team Philippines. And I remember before, I never thought about joining pageants. I was a boyish girl, I did karate, I did swimming, I did soccer. So, I, it was never like in me to become a beauty queen. And so my mom heard this by some of the people and she's like, you should try this out because it's a good experience. She'll learn a lot of things. And I was like, yeah, like I tried it out. And for me, it was scary because like I wouldn't know what was gonna happen. And when I reached in Manila, like it came directly in my mind. Like why was I scared when the community from Missy and Philippines were so nice? They were so open, even if we came so far, and they taught me so many lessons. Exactly what they said: that joining Missy and Philippines is a journey, and we learn a lot of things with it. 
And one of the most, um, one of the most things that I remember the most is meeting the 40 candidates. They taught me so many lessons. They taught me how to speak in Tagalog, which I'm very weak at. <laughs> but they were very patient with me. And then they told me to just never give up. I was one of the shortest candidates. I was number one. And I remember, <laughs> I remember that on the day of the pageant, my dress got broken. Like this zipper got broken. And I was in panic mode and all the girls were like, don't be scared, we're gonna do everything. So most of the girls were at my back, fixing my zipper. And it was just amazing. Like the bond that we had, it was just incredible. And I think that's one of the things that I'll remember the most because they taught me a lot of things. And until now, it's still with me. So yeah. Can I just add something? I think what's so great about the team Philippines Day because it's truly a nationwide contest. It's like when you come in for the pageant week, you automatically have friends from all over the Philippines. So no matter where you travel in the Philippines, you have like, oh, I can call my co-candidate and have friends. And I guess friendship is very important in the whole pageant in the sea Philippines. Next question. Um, hello, good afternoon. My name is Jay Barbo from Pageant Talk Overload. My question is for Miss Team Philippines first runner up, Shira Ocampo. Hello, I'm here. Hi. You. I'm here. Hello, hi. Alright, here is your question. As Miss Team Philippines first runner up, what kind of role did you play in continuing the pageant's advocacy of promoting global readiness through education among the Filipino youth? So aside from being a great support to my roommate and also Miss Team Philippines, Actually, global readiness, I can really relate to that because funny enough, after the pageant around, uh, two years uh, after the pageant, um, I got an interview for a scholarship in Thailand and the director there is actually the translator of Miss Thailand for Miss Universe. Um, and Miss Teen was um, sort of a common ground for us. Um, it gave me an edge also. We were able to talk about pageantry, being able to um, influence um, again the youth. And I was given the chance to um, study in Chiang Mai University. So um, I feel like, um, again, that was two, just two years after. We've done a lot um, of advocacy um, uh, during the year of our reign. But um, even two years after, I was able to share my experiences for Miss Teen Philippines in Thailand because I was with. Um, Cambodians, I was with Americans, I was with um, Thai people who are also in love with pageants. So because of that, I was able to um, share also my experiences uh, here in the Philippines, um, the country, uh, the people, even the youth, because they're also my fellow youth. Um, so I feel like it may not be um, sort of um, an official advocacy, but I feel like me being um, a part of Miss Teen Philippines, it's already uh, a representation of how I also uh, talk to people, how I speak, and also how I present. Because yeah, during that time I presented so many um, papers and everything. Um, and yeah, it gave me an edge. Um, yeah, and I was also, of course, supporting um, Nicole. We had so many um, conferences. We were able to host for the Department uh, of Education, um, be able to um, speak with national youth, um, Ambassadors. Oh, and also I was the National Youth Commission Ambassador for the Sal University that time. So I was able to bring in, um, sorry, uh, the programs of NYC, uh, National, yes, NYC to the LSU. So yeah, a support and also I guess I was given a chance to go to Thailand and spread it more. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Frankie Kanamaru from Pageant Day. And my question is for Bianca Williamson. Hi, Bianca. Hello. And my question is, how has your life changed since you became a, one of the finalists of Miss Teen Philippines? Okay, so I was one of the 40 candidates in Miss Teen Philippines. And right, I said I was candidate number one. And I was lucky enough that I was remembered and they made me top 15. And through that, it gave me so many lessons. It made me confident. It made me that I would be a good role model to other people because, as I said, I was one of the shortest candidates. And sometimes people think that if you're short, you can't do beauty pageants because some people think that it's a disadvantage. And when I did beauty pageants, 
it made them it, it made them see that even if you don't really have the height, it's still possible to continue the, your dreams. And after Miss Team Philippines, I did a few more pageants. I won as Miss Consolation 2016. It was on my municipality. And I did Sinulu Plus Queen this year. I won as second runner-up. And through that, a lot of people came up to me and they said like I was an inspiration to them. A lot of people from Cebu who doesn't have that much in height, they said like even if that I'm short, I can still continue my dreams by seeing me do those types of pageants. And for me, it's a great advantage. Uh, it's a great um, advantage and also it's also something that made me really proud because I can influence them to be proud of themselves. So yeah. And it all started here in Miss Teen Philippines, always. <laughs> great job. So another question, despite the first success in pageantry, uh, do you still, what other pageants that you're eyeing? Or you want to join? Right now, um, I'm planning to join this pageant in Leyte. Um, so that's what I'm planning to do. But right now, also, I, I want to join Miss World. <laughs> we'll see if they accept me. And if I get accepted, I'm still going to do my best. And like, as I said, Miss Teen Philippines helped us a lot. And if I do get in Miss World, then I'll be so thankful because everything started here. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Noli from OPM Worldwide. My question is, uh, there are uh, numbers of uh, pageants for teenagers uh, existing in our country today. So how will this uh, search to set up from the other uh, teen-oriented pageants? Um, I think what distinguishes Miss Teen Philippines from the other pageants is its advocacy. So just to share, um, the interview going in Miss Teen Philippines was really tough, right? Like, um, the founders were the ones who asked us, who interviewed us. So if you would expect the questions to be like, what's your hobby, what's your favorite activity, like a subject, it was not like that. So I was asked like, if you, um, if you would have a, a minute with the president, what would you tell him? And I can still remember, like, if you had 20 million pesos, what would you do with it? And for a 15-year-old, I was like, wow, you know, these are, these are, like, questions that mean that this pageant is really looking for someone who, who is smart, who can speak for his fellow youth. And I think that what distinguishes this pageant from others. Um, and as mentioned by Stephanie, um, the alumni of Miss Teen Philippines are really just successful. They have accomplished so much in different fields, in different ways. And I think that's kind of like the branding that Miss Teen Philippines gives to its candidates that um, the moment they step out of the pageant, they are never the same. So as Sir Mar uh, as Authority Mark said, once a Miss Teen, always a Miss Teen. So it really stays on you. The advocacy you live in, not just after the coronation night, you go back to your priorities. No, you actually become Miss Teen Philippines, whether or not you win. Like it's imbibed on you. It's like a spirit, I think. That until now we we keep um, that keeps us together. We actually have a group chat, like our batch, and we still um, like um, um, communicate with each other, like oh who's in Manila, who wants to hang out, and yeah, the friendship is is really um, it's really still it's still there. And one thing I um, another thing that I think makes it different is that there was no sense of competition amongst us, like. You know, the, the sabotage usually that happens in, in, in other pageants. Um, Miss Teen Philippines was not like that. It was like a place of growth for everyone. Like, everybody loves each other. We help each other. Like, Bianca said, we're helping fix our dresses because um, when we fit the dress, we're still slim. And after feeding us, we're like a week on the face. We really get a lot of weight for the final fitting. So we were like helping each other fix, you know, the, the buttons and the difference of our clothes. and. Um, yeah, the friendship, especially of the candidates, is really priceless. So um, this pageant is amazing and we can't be more happy that it's back and it's now going to take another set of, of empowered women to take on the stage and buy for the crown for, to, for 2019. Yeah. Uh, are there revisions uh, with regards to requirements and qualifications for those who want to join the series? 
position. So we, before it we used to be 13 to 18. Um, now they raised it to 14 to 18 because um, I think before there was a kind of it was really so young and it like the age gap from 13 to 18 is quite big. So they changed it to 14 to 18. Um, before the point where there was a height requirement, but now they're putting it to like minimum of five two in height. And um, as, well, as far as I remember, the, uh, the other qualifications is that the girl must be, of course, a national born Filipina, well, single, or never been married, um, and currently enrolled in an educational institution. So those would be like the usual requirements. And um, Sir Ferdy will be saying something. If I may add, no? um, if the, the qualifications um, has been revised a bit to uh, keep up with the times, no? um, more so now with the social media very active. And then, of course, when you look at 13 year olds, you just so bad. Uh, 14, we said yes because we've had already two 14-year-old winners, Stephanie Sol and Julian Sabar of, uh, I think, 06. Uh, so, mukhang kaya naman nila. We had a 13-year-old before. Um, her name, she's actually known now as Luis de los Reyes. We did not take her in when she was 13. We took her in when she was 14. And she was quite ready. In 13, talaga neneng nene pa siya nung So, yun. Um, and if you were to ask a while ago about the difference in uh, Miss Team Philippines as the, as, uh, compared to the other team pageants, I may not be aware of how they conduct Miss Team Philippines, oh, Miss Team pageants or what teenager pageants in other organizations. But in our organization, we make it a truly nationwide search. We have pocket pageants. In other words, we have, in other words, we have small pageants done in different regions. Why we did this? Because these are very young ladies. As they say, dito sila lahat magsimula. Marami dyan never pa ng pageant. So at least if they have their experience in a pageant sa lugar nila, supportado ng mga pamilya, kaibigan, so, they don't just come to Manila, pageant na. They have their little pageants in their own regions for them to experience how it is to be in a pageant. And then they come to the nationals to have the big pageant. So, you know, parang grade, parang grade school to high school. So, yun yung, yun yung atake namin sa search namin for this team. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Good luck to the team. Good afternoon. I'm Jay Pata of the Malaya Business Insight. Um, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Richie. I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> okay. Um, I just want to ask um, what made you decide to uh, stage this uh, after three years to stage this interview? Sir Ferdy can answer that question. Because we gave it this year. Lang. Yes, um, for the years, um, we, we were they were planning to start the Miss Philippines 2019. But let me call on Mr. Ferdy. Okay, actually, our Miss Teen Philippines never knows our we So we're still in touch. You know, even Steph would attest to that. We know how they've been doing. We know who became lawyers. We know who became dentists. We know who got married. We know who did not have a good life. I mean, it's not all, you know, sweet, diba? May, may good and bad, diba? May mga iba not so good. May mga iba really good. But, you know, we, we feel that we're family. Eh? We, we are in touch with them. We're even in touch with the parents, some of the parents. And, um, when we started Miss Teen back in 2004, it was just a group of friends who were, who were just thinking about, hey, pageant, parang, uh, that's kind of, you know, sometimes, parang nakaawa, when, when you listen to how the cheers are, 
with the way sometimes one just one single candidate would answer wrongly parang hindi dapat ganito eh we should uplift and empower these women diba? because it's not easy to stand in front of a lot of people to answer difficult questions sabi namin but anong pwede natin gawin ang dami ng pageant niya at the time meron na bang teenager type of ano none or none that we know of there was maybe Miss Young International, if I'm correct. No? But uh, other than that, we were not aware. So, uh, next question is, do you miss Team Philippines? Na ba? So, research? Wala. We registered the name Miss Team Philippines immediately the week after and said, okay, let's ask friends if this is viable. A lot of support came in and we did it. We did it for a few years and then the crisis came so sad to say we will continue syempre let's be realistic financially if you're down mahirap rin talaga dito right? no that now that uh, syempre mas maganda na situation ng Pilipinas and um, and uh, of course the pageant industry is booming right now we all know that so I think it's the perfect time to come back now when we met Richie also and her group they were into, you know, this youth empowerment. And then we discussed, hey, we have this. Why, why don't we do this? Why don't we collaborate? So, well, yes. And then say, okay, we will let you run it. We will give you the license to run it. Let's do it, but we will support you. And we'll make sure that hopefully, Miss Team Philippines will be here to stay. And with, of course, with all the support of everyone from media, from press, from sponsors, from our old, no, they're still young, our young, young winners, and all the Miss Team from all over the country. I mean, the, the, we have a Facebook group. No, when I posted, they were so excited. Okay, some of them are moms na, some of them are dreaming that my daughter will hopefully be a Miss Team. Sabi niya, medyo hintay pa lang tayo, five years old pa lang yan. So, <laughs> yeah. so that's how it is. I have covered this from the very beginning in 2004. And I must commend you for uh, coming up with the most deserving winners. Beginning with so Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I would agree with you. And my next question.